I had a black dog. Its name was depression. We first met five months after my 18th birthday in a doctor's office, right after a night watching the waves coming in and out, in and out, in and out, and a day contemplating. The crooked February sun hung over in my kitchen, silence radiating through this wasteland, this soon-to-be graveyard. I first met Black Dog when there was no other option but the Xanax, the Seroxet, the Escitalopram. I first met Black Dog because I was so engulfed by it. I wasn't eating, rather, it was eating me. Dinners gone cold, day after day, legs bouncing underneath tabletops over and over and over again. He was waiting for my body to disintegrate, to chew at my bones, build a tent out of bodily ruins, a museum full of trinkets that aren't really mine. So when I unclasped, undressed, unzipped, undid my hems, cut me in half, found a silver thread lining my abdomen for the doctor to take a look. He spotted Black Dog bouncing on my ribs just underneath my breasts. He's prancing along the silk-lined burrow in the middle of my chest. This translucent kind of silence wrapped around my being the most palpable kind of hurt. I said, Black Dog is a marching band having a hell of a time stomping away through the corridors of my bones, eating away at my bone marrow, turning me into a bird, this empty sort of being that carries no weight and all of it at once. He asked my mother to take a look at inside of me. My mother's always been impeccable at hide-and-go-seek, but today, as she seeked, she was shocked by this element of surprise arriving unannounced and without hesitation, the hell of this storm, the ache resonating through my ribcage. Because Black Dog makes everything that hurt start with a subtle ache, some days with his hands in my hair and other days with his hands gripping my hair like a rash that does not heal from patch to outbreak, no longer a mere accident now full-on infection. So he rips through the sickness and introduces everyone to the little girl buried inside of me. He makes me carry her with me wherever I go. Each night, this child, this baby, crawls up and down my downlaid body, swinging from one rib to another. The edges of her fingertips fossilized into the white. She prances up and down my spine, singing songs of girlhood, Christmas, birthdays. So I never sleep, remembering dog, kidnapping child, making her his own, untangling girlhood from womanhood, taking the reins in his own dirty hands. The child screams against the walls of my throat, begging out. But the louder she screams, the deeper I swallow. The higher the pitch gets, the deeper I bury her. And the little girl burns in the acid of each gulp each tear uncried, a thousand matchsticks ablaze. Because Black Dog sets my home on fire and yells, you are the flame, the heat of a body on fire tickles my nose, it teases me with burned down curtains, taps that have run out of water, torn up clothing, wasted photographs. I'm having a hell of a time burning through memories till I'm in the red. Black Dog stands right outside my burning home, dancing in front of a corpse on fire like he's fireproof. But the ceiling is about to collapse, and my skin is starting to blister. And the child screams against the walls of my throat, begging out. But Black Dog shows no sympathy. He tells me to kick her in the face, tell her to fuck off, Every time she walks through the door to suffocate her until she turns blue, makes me sit with her, limp in my arms, run my pinky 
over her dry lips, put my cheek against her nose and listen for her breath while he watches, unmoved, not fretting, not crying. And I'm dancing through the panic. I've killed her. And I'm trying not to tear the curtains down, trying not to tear his face apart. Why would he make me do this? Why would he make me walk into my own mortuary, watch the curly-haired, freckled, misunderstood me turn blue with my hands wrapped around her little neck? And I'm here to tell you all of these stories. I want to tell you how bad it was, how bad it was to try to raise myself from the dead, to be Jesus, even though I don't believe in him, to be Jesus, even though he does not believe in me unwrap my lilac fingers from around her neck, leaving traces of big hands, squeeze blood out of her heart, in and out, in and out, in and out, breathe into her mouth twice over, over and over and over again. So I'm sorry for the mess, the tender smell of my skin after the first shower in days I'm covered in honey, in this glutinous, untidy mess. But I finally started returning to old comforts, standing underneath blistering water until my fingertips melt into something like shriveled cherry tomatoes, forgotten in the fridge, a wasteland of wear and tear. And as I unfasten, unveil, untie, undress to get in, black dog, looks at me naked, standing at the corner of my shower and laughs, laughs at the house he built, a home with no windows, often, me, often giving me a splendid tour while dragging me on my knees. The rooms arrange themselves in my absence, waiting for my big return. I've never seen such patience. Black dog teases me with love. He decorates my crooked spine with his lips, carefully voyaging, across my whole body, because black dog is starved of love, raised as a hungry thing, looking for love wherever he can find it. Love for black dog is a snow globe, always stuck between fantasy and hand grenade. So black dog breaks my bones so people can cradle me in their arms because it knows no difference between what feeds you and what cuts you in half. Black dog shoves my head in a bath of water and demands me to breathe. The water turns mad when he is in it. I'm swimming in tempestuous seas, replacing water with honey, solidifying itself around my ankles. The harder I kick, the thicker it gets. And I'm the only one drowning. Everyone else is only drenched. Black dog insists the colors of my bedsheets are missing me with grief seeping through me like oil on water, visible and announcing, feeling many things, and none of them slightly. Black Dog says, your bed is bleeding, each droplet spelling out your name. There's a lump in your throat, and it tastes like self-sabotage. And we're reluctantly dancing, trying to avoid stepping on each other's toes and occasionally failing, and as I lay my head on the pillow, Black Dog shakes me awake, demanding me to dance again. He drops the medication into my throat. I try to guess why it has such a creepy, tongue-twisting name. And as I crawl out of bed, I trip on my words. I trip on myself. Black Dog is the most stunning acrobat I have ever seen. Sometimes I can barely recognize its shape. He rides the bus with me, teeth dug into my right ankle, reminding me of the time I tried to drive, and he insisted I let go of the wheel drive right into some wall, telling me how exceptional it would be to be surrounded by flames, tucking my hair behind my ear, whispering, I will love you if you stay right here. Black dog kicks the back of my knees. I fall. I build a home there. And as I yell fire, I am already ablaze, and I try to pet it dead. Stop, drop, roll. Most days, my body is a cemetery. On some, it is a museum of the things Black Dog did I never want to forget. 
And this is not a suicide note or a love letter, but when I notice my breasts becoming more and more shallow, like Stock's head pressing against my breastplate, I drag myself into this burning home just one last time, tied my wisdom tooth to a doorknob and let it take with it all the answers. I wanted to drink myself to sleep. I left some pasta in the fridge. The floors were clean. White sheets folded at the edge of my bed, my clothes carefully organized by color. Everything was ready. But the silence changed. I realized something is fundamentally wrong with me. It was Tuesday. I hadn't washed my hair in five days, hadn't eaten in about 16. My best friend's voice holding my hand through the phone, my brothers hanging onto me for dear life, black dog wrapped around my ankles, because everything I touch becomes sick with sadness. And black dog makes you love in the weirdest of ways. So when my mother says, mind the dogs, do not blame her. She too would lock me up inside my home if she could. She'd sleep better at night, knowing no dog can walk through me leaving his footprints behind within me, threading through the waters that will hold my daughters. So I'm here to tell you all of these stories. I want to tell you how nice it was to realize that my home is on fire and I cannot put it out using my bare hands. To see Black Dog make me set off the fire alarm, face my haunting, stay with it, stick with therapy. Realize that March and June and October are really bad fucking months. Learn to breathe with a head submerged underwater. Take it two weeks at a time that running on a treadmill that is stuck and forever plugged will eventually be the end of me. So I never fail to forget how Black Dog made me love myself as a childhoodless child, always this half-grown adult. Drag the poetry on my wounds and he's lingering near the door uncomfortably, begging me not to let him go. Black Dog fraternizes a fork with a spoon as he eats away at my tongue as I try to find the words. Because the truth is, I don't know what to do with it, but to write it, to transcribe it into poetry, and I've tried to unfold it and bring the corners together like a worn-out blanket, fold it again into a perfect rectangle. I've tried to toss it into the kitchen sink, along with the dirty cups, as if it were a pan. Scrub the handles, the bottom, the insides. Wipe it clean, dry it on a newly bought rack. I've tried to throw it into the washing machine, along with the whites, wondering if it would come out pristine, too. So Black Dog tries on my poetry like starched, white Sunday clothes. But the hem of the last stanza drapes far too low past his ankles, the metaphors too tight along his past puff chest. Is this one about me? Thank you.